What are metapopulations? These are subgroups within a population, and these populations are both genetic and ecological units, where species members interact with one another, and these populations have size and geographical boundaries. There are two types of populations. These are unitary and modular. Unitary populations are when the individuals are easily defined. This is common on most fauna species and many flora species, whereas modular populations are more difficult to define, as many of these populations consist of lots of smaller units, such as colonial organisms. An example of this is periphera. Metapopulations consist of a group of spatially spread out populations of the same species that interact with each other at some level. These metapopulations are generally made up of several distinct populations together with the spaces of suitable habitats that currently have an unoccupied niche. Population cycles within the individual populations are independent and eventually become extinct due to the demographic events and usually the smaller the population then the higher the risk of inbreeding and extinction. The model of population dynamics has mostly been applied to species populations impacted by habitat fragmentation. Now, it's time for some history. The metapopulation concept was introduced by Richard Levin in 1969 and is the concept where individuals within a population reproduce and die within local patches of the habitat and their offspring can disperse into other patches. The migration of an individual depends on the distance and spatial configuration of the area. To expand on this, it is now assumed that local populations have a higher risk of extinction, so metapopulations are in stochastic equilibrium between localised extinctions and colonisations of a currently non-occupied space with potentially suitable patches of habitat. Interactions between individuals of the same species but that are not from the same local populations can occur, however this is not very often. These interactions can lead to reproduction, which will continue the growth of the species as a whole, as well as increase the gene pool and reduce inbreeding within the population. Levin's model assumes that metapopulations exist in a homogeneous habitat that has been divided into subgroups, and secondly, that the offspring randomly disperse within the habitat. This model demonstrates how proportions of patches are occupied. In the marine environment, anthropogenic activities and natural disasters are huge impacts for habitat fragmentation and they are causing larger habitats into patches that are now separated. These factors then cause there to be individual populations that are spatially distributed within a habitat. The black-browed albatross, also known as Thalassoce melanopterus. The black-browed albatross is a circumpolar species that is located over the Antarctic, subantarctic and subtropical waters and they breed on subantarctic and Antarctic islands between 46 degrees and 56 degrees south. In 1998 the Falkland Islands were home to over 80% of the total population and it was the most influential breeding locality for this species. Now 67% are in the Falklands, 12% in South Georgia and 20% in Chile. Research shows that seawater surface temperature anomalies affect the breeding success of the population in breeding and non-breeding seasons. Also, in Tasmania, the tuna longlining resulted in vast amounts of black-browed albatross bycatch mortalities. This is because the black-browed albatross is impacted by the anthropogenic activity involved in fisheries as they are subject to oil spills. The oil which gets stuck amongst their feathers, inhibiting them from flying, causing them to suffocate underwater due to the heaviness of the oil or be more accessible to predators in the water. Across the globe, the black-browed albatross mortalities occurred at the Patagonian shelf off the South African coast due to trawlers in deep water hake fisheries. Because this species is now threatened, it is protected under the Agreement of the Conservation of Albatross and Petrels. ACAP 2012, and industries must comply with the rules and regulations of this agreement all over the world. These mortalities can have a big impact on the overall population of black-browed albatross, as the breeding pairs may have lost a partner due to the relationships between individuals. The albatross partners that survive will not breed with another, so the birth rates for that localised population then decreases, resulting in a lower total population for the black-browed albatross.
Odd orcas typically remain in their tightly bonded matrilineal pods where they remain close for their intimate family members for all of their lives, travelling up to 100 miles a day. This travelling makes this species one of the largest ranging mammals in the world. One issue that is greatly impacting on the population of orca is the targeting and capture for amusement parks and marine parks for over a decade. Another issue that wild orcas face is consumption of plastics and using the seas to dispose of it. An estimated 300 million tonnes of plastic is produced every year and from that 8.8 million tonnes goes into our oceans and threatens over 700 species of marine life with extinction. Lulu the orca an orca affected by plastic consumption was Lulu. This orca died off the coast of Scotland in 2016 after she ingested toxic chemicals and got entangled in fishing nets. Overfishing is one of the many anthropogenic activities impacting on the population of orca in the wild as this is reducing the amount and availability of food for the species as they are a top predator so need to consume high energy level foods like seals, herring and even some pelagic seabirds. Orcas also consume Atlantic salmon, and off the west coast of America, the population of salmon has decreased rapidly due to the hydroelectric dams and other human intrusions to the habitat. This, along with conflicts with fisheries, all impact upon the population of orca, particularly in this case the local population of Northwest orca. The southern resident orca population is deemed as the most studied population of orca in the world. However, it has now been discovered that their population is also on the decline. In 1974, there was a total of 71 individuals in the population and then a rapid increase of 97 individuals in 1996. However, since then, the population has dropped below 80 and because of their position at the top of the food chain, it makes them susceptible to pollution and chemicals and suffer from disease. For this reason, some scientists consider orca to be an indicator species for the overall health of the marine ecosystem. So in other words, if the population of orca is on the decline, then it can be assumed that the rest of the marine life is also being affected. The population of polar bears is drastically on the decline due to anthropogenic activities. Polar bears require the sea ice to access and hunt their preferred food source of seals. Polar bears have to travel to find food so the search and handling costs of foraging for them is relatively high in comparison to the payoff they get. They also take long periods of time where they cannot hunt so need to conserve energy to last. Polar bears are one of the prime examples of species affected by climate change. Climate change would not have occurred too quickly and harshly if it wasn't for humans using energy to heat up the globe. This heating impacts on the population of polar bears as it causes the sea ice to melt and this reduces the availability to resources like food but also eliminates their habitat, forcing them to come to land and into towns and cities around the Arctic Circle. Another problem that affects polar bears are oil spills, as when oil spills occur in the marine environment it can contaminate the polar bear's fur, causing them to lose their insulation in the cold environment. There are currently 19 subpopulations of polar bears in the Arctic region and the continued disappearance of the sea ice in the near future is expected to decline the number of these subpopulations. As in the summer months, there is no accessible route to migrate, isolating the populations. This isolation can result in a number of negative factors, as it will increase the chances of inbreeding, which can lead to disease, as individuals from different subpopulations cannot interact and reproduce with each other to expand the gene pool. This loss of genetic variability in fragmented habitats can be counteracted by individuals that participate in long-distance dispersal, either by swimming or drifting on unattached sea ice. Even though the cost of this long-distance swimming has some very high costs, it is also thought that this could potentially help to retain the demographic stability and genetic variability of the total population of polar bears worldwide. Biotic and abiotic factors that influence metapopulations Biotic and abiotic factors consist of a variety of living and non-living factors, such as for living, flora, fauna, fungi, algae and bacteria, whereas for non-living things like light intensity, temperature, salinity, moisture, wind or water currents, as well as sediment type and nutrient availability. Metapopulation persistence occurs between the dispersal and stochastic processes in the living and non-living environment. 
Most regularly, dispersal is a saviour for spatially isolated populations with low densities and is therefore a key influencer when it comes to long-term metapopulation persistence. However, sometimes too much dispersal can be unbeneficial and can lead to increased population synchrony. Increasing the risk of metapopulations mass extinction when densities are low. A species can be divided into a series of groups known as populations. The individuals within the population share the same general influence of the biotic and abiotic environment. In other words, the biological and physical environments and the factors that come along with them. Within each population, it is highly likely that the individuals will breed with each other rather than individuals of different populations but for the same species as a whole. This indicates that the members of the same population can move freely throughout the geographical range of the population, but they are still isolated from other populations. Geographical obstacles and boundaries can divide species into a series of different populations. For example, a peninsula, change in environmental conditions or a break in the environment. Many marine populations are dynamic and the survival of adults in the population is a major factor in the population change. If the survival rate is high, then the current population size is a large influencer for explaining the population size in future time stage. Another important influencer in the population dynamics is the births and successful survival of young. Generation time is the mean time between births and the age of the first reproductions. If there are more generations present, then there will be a higher level of generations per unit time, and more offspring will be produced as well as a greater potential rate of population increase. Lots of marine species are able to produce masses of eggs per individual female. This is proof of how low the survival rate of adults is and the extremely low survival of juveniles, so they would seem to follow an R strategy when it comes to reproduction. They have a shorter lifespan and therefore need to produce offspring for quantity instead of quality, unlike some marine mammals in particular. Juveniles are most commonly planktonic larvae in their early life, and the variation of ocean currents often force them away from suitable and well-equipped environments for which they could settle. Another factor that may affect reproduction, and in this case the lack of, is food limitations. Because if resources are limited in a location, then it can affect the survival, growth and reproduction of a population. Whereas if there were a limitless amount of resources and there were no catastrophic, biotic or abiotic events, then a population could continue to increase for the foreseeable future. This is known as exponential growth. However, this is not the case as eventually the environment begins to push back and with the limited amount of resources, the population's increase decelerates as the carrying capacity is coming nearer. Population size, fluctuation and extinction are all closely related as most populations fluctuate greatly because of a change in the environmental conditions that can affect reproduction and mortality in that population. For example, when a population size is small, quite minor and random changes to the environment can cause a population to become extinct if they are not well adapted or learnt to this change. Also, when there are very low densities in small populations, then it can result in some males not being able to find a mate and encounter eggs from a female. This is particularly noticed in endangered species, as the rate of mortality is almost higher than the rate of reproduction, where subpopulations are so isolated from each other, there are not enough individuals mating with each other to continue the growth of the population. Population dynamics and genetic differences are highly controlled by the interrelationships between populations of the same species. Complete mixing of individuals within each generation will reduce genetic differences between the populations. This is because any changes that occur within a generation will be cleared out during the dispersal event. Dispersing planktonic larvae is an example of this as the difference between the subpopulations is that they must develop in the time frame of a generation. Using examples of predator-prey relationships to continue this theory as an example is a predator species of Atlantic blue marlin preying on mackerel. In one population of mackerel, the large predators might kill all of the population apart from the smallest juvenile prey, but in another population, the presence of smaller predators might be present immunity on the largest individuals of the population, so you may only find very small prey organisms in the first population, but in the other only large organisms left. In every generation, a strong dispersal stage will mix these subpopulations and local adaptations to the different types of predators. It is extremely difficult for those species lower down the food chain. 
Some prey species may be able to evolve different phenotypes that allow an individual to react and defend themselves from predators, depending on the sort of habitat they are present in.